Why does Disneyland have a big castle at the center of the theme park? Actually, wherever you go in the park, you will find large structures that seem to draw you into their corresponding areas. Big Thunder Mountain draws you into Frontierland. The Mark Twain Riverboat takes you to the rivers of America. And the Astro Orbiter draws you into Tomorrowland. And that's exactly what they're for. To pique your curiosity, draw you into a location, and to give you a reference point, so you know roughly where you are at all times. This is also common practice in video game level design. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild features Hyrule Castle as a central location in the game's world. The rest of the map is also filled with landmarks, such as the Dueling Peaks, Death Mountain, or the Temple of Time at the start of the game. Generally, those kind of landmarks are either large man-made structures or creations of nature that stand out from the composition and draw the player's eye. Let's say we have a small city here for the player to explore. The paths are winding and many streets and buildings look vaguely the same. It might be hard for the player to navigate through the city and find their way to where they want to go. Now, what happens when we put a big building in the middle? From most areas in the city, the player can see where they are relative to the building, making it a lot easier to find their way around the environment. Additionally, because the player is naturally drawn towards the landmark, it's an excellent location to populate with important NPCs, a hub with important shops for the player to buy and sell their items, scripted events, a showdown with a big boss or waves of enemies. This way, you can be sure that the player won't miss your awesome and carefully crafted content. Hopefully, you've learned something about the use of landmarks and level design and can apply them to your own creations. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.